It's no secret that Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa. What's more to her? With over three billion metric tons of iron ore deposits found in Kogi, Enugu, and Niger states, an estimated 10 million tons of lead zinc veins spread across many states in Nigeria. Over 7.5 million tons of barite in Taraba and Bauchi states, an abundance of lithium and gold in Nasarawa, Ogun state, and many more. Nigeria is blessed with a diverse mix of mineral deposits. The Nigerian government, through the Ministry of Solid Minerals Development, is setting the pace to reposition Nigeria as an economic powerhouse. Join us every Monday, 16:30 GMT, and on Saturday, 9 hours GMT, for the program Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems, where we highlight the activities of the solid mineral sector to discover the vast natural resources of the country and know more about the sector. Remember, Mondays at 16:30 GMT and Saturdays at 9 hours GMT. Uncovering, Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Gems. The Nigerian government has started the process of implementing the 2.5 billion naira satellite surveillance system aimed at revolutionizing the nation's mining sector. The digital transformation is set to boost efficiency, enhance safety, and improve security, ultimately driving economic growth. In an exclusive interview with Voice of Nigeria's solid minerals correspondent Hawa Gidado in Abuja, the nation's capital, Dr. Olugbenga Oyewale, managing director, Miki Way Visuals Limited, shared his optimism about the project and elaborated on how the satellite technology will transform Nigeria's mining industry and other key sectors. Dr. Oyewale explained that Miki Way Visuals Limited is a commercial arm of the National Space Research and Development Agency, NASDRA. The company is a commercial company of the National Space Research and Development Agency. Uh, uh, by the way, that, that's to say it's a pseudo government company, kind of, because government has equity in it. Uh, so it belongs to NASDAQ, and we operate, we use satellite data to support ministries, departments, and agencies of government. When asked about the type of satellite surveillance technology being deployed to monitor mining activities across Nigeria, Dr. Yewale offered detailed insights. So going to the technology that you asked, uh, it's going to come in layers. The first part of it, knowing very well that satellite covers everywhere, it sees everything and doesn't forget anything. So the satellite being there up in the sky is seeing Nigeria and all our terrain and the activities that happen on ground. So the first part of this technology is to provide the mineral map of Nigeria. And by the way, we're going to be working a lot with the uh, other agencies within the ministry, the the NGSA. Uh, the NGSA, the MCO, the Mineral Inspector, the Inspectorate Department, to do all the things that we're going to, the mining machine in particular, to do all that we're going to do. Our job is to provide the technologies and point the ministry. To where things are happening, to ensure that things are tidied up, uh, and we're going to support a lot in that direction. So the technology, like I said, has a view; it has an overview of the entire country. It sees everything, doesn't forget anything. So the first thing that we're going to do is to have the mineral map of Nigeria: what is where, where these minerals are located. Then, following that, we walk. Directly with the uh, MCO, all the people they've given licenses to, they will release the licenses to us. I mean, they coordinate the the details of those licenses. So we we'll create what is called shape files of those licenses and ingest this into the satellite. So satellite will now put the licenses over the mineral map. So at a glance, you first know. Where uh, areas are located and areas not are located, satellite will further tell us if people are mining at places not allocated. Obviously, that's illegal mining. The ones mining at allocated places can be assumed to be legal until inspectors get there. Because when they get there, we are, we are going to also give the miners 
an ID card. So the ID card will contain RFID tags. So when the inspectors get to a mining site and find people mining, they say, bring out your card. They scan it. When they scan it, they know whether it was the man that that place was allocated to that is mining there or not. So that's going to also sort out the next level there. Praising the efforts of the Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Dr. Dili Alake, Dr. Oyewale urged other government officials to follow his exemplary leadership. I want to give a lot of kudos to the Honorable Minister, Dr. Dili Alake, for accepting the geospatial technology. Uh, the, that's the way the nation should go. All the other ministers can also tap into one thing or the other. Uh, America, the only difference between America and Nigeria is the use of technology. And uh, if we go that way and uh, also add intelligence collaboration to it, like the Honorable Minister has done, there is no other thing America is doing differently. And Nigeria can be up there in no time. Dr. Oyewale further elaborated on the transformative impact of the satellite surveillance technology, highlighting its potential to modernize the sector. It is a whole industry that can transform the entire country. So these are some of the technologies that we are planning to deploy uh, in, the, in, in the solid mirror sector. Like I said earlier, similar things can be done as well. The solid mirror ministry is now the trailblazer uh, for Nigeria. We are for the first time in the history of this country using the appropriate technology to tackle our problems. And it, it, I think it will be so resolved in our field. Speaking on the resolution and accuracy of the satellite imagery, Dr. Oyewale explained the high standards expected from the advanced technology. We have imageries that could be as low as 30 centimeters from that's almost 500 kilometers above. We can have images that are about uh, 30 centimeters, which is the best in the world right now. Uh, that can be pan sharpened to some lower centimeters. Then we have the medium ones, which could be like 80, you know, like that centimeters. But if we, it depends on what we are looking for. If I'm looking for a truck at a site, I want to know how many trucks are there. At a, at a given time, I would need to use high resolution maps. I mean, images. It could be optical, it could be synthetic aperture reader. The optical satellites can see in the daytime. But when there is dust in the atmosphere, or there's smoke, or it's in the night, it will not see. Then we switch to synthetic aperture reader satellite that sees through smoke, dust, night. It sees through anything and you can detect changes in millimeters on the ground. So it works for anything, it depends on what we are looking for at any point in time. Discussing the potential benefits for both the government and citizens, as well as the necessary workforce to operate the system, Dr. Yoweli emphasized the positive outcomes for Nigeria. The ministry, the government is concerned about the health of the people safety of the miners, optimizing revenue to the, uh, to the government so that there will be enough to share between the federal government, the state, and even the communities where these minerals come from, depending on the arrangement with the government. The government has, a, has everything for everybody. Dr. Oyewale also addressed concerns regarding the latency between image capture and satellite transmission, offering clarity on the process. There's no real-time satellite images anywhere in the world, not even with America. But the best part of it is that we have access to over 400 satellites doing different things. So in one hour, you may have 20 of these satellites passing over Nigeria. So we are really not missing much. But when we need to give real-time images, and transmit, we use drones. The drone is connected with satellite communication. And at that, you can watch live what is happening in real time. He spoke on the security measures in place to ensure that access to satellite surveillance data is strictly regulated 
preventing unauthorized access. The ministry will choose who and who will have access to it. MCO should have access, NGSA should have access, uh, MI should have access. That's in my own opinion, but the ministry will guide us further on who would have access. Then concerning security data, that's another level entirely. That might just be with the DSS. The ministry has taken us to the DSS office before. We've met with the DSS people. They will have this intelligence. They can act on it, maybe in collaboration with the uh, mining marshal and the office of the NSA. The security will be taken care of at that level. Dr. Oyewale further elaborated on the cutting-edge technologies being integrated into the satellite surveillance system. It will be possible using the same technologies to go back in time and observe certain things that had happened for recovery of revenues not paid. He assured Nigerians that the satellite system will have a positive impact on public health and the environment, bringing much needed benefits to these critical sectors. The satellite is being used by all countries in the world. It has been deemed to be safe for any intent and purpose, it's been safe. When asked about future collaborations with other regulatory agencies, Dr. Oyewale shared plans to strengthen partnerships for effective monitoring and governance. You know, that's the happiest part of this thing that uh, Dr. Dele Alake has gone this far to extend uh, the hand of fellowship to NASDA. Uh, he has to do a bit more to extend to the customs at the ports, extend to the police, extend to the immigration or airport authority, you know, where, wherever. Dr. Iwale also discussed plans to involve various stakeholders in the project, ensuring broad-based support and contribution to its success. The ministry is concluding arrangements for sensitization, awareness. Uh, they will be calling uh, them zone by zone to Abuja to discuss with them where they will meet with the Honorable Minister, ask all questions that may concern them. Uh, everybody will see what he intends to benefit. Addressing concerns about previous abandoned mining projects in Nigeria, Dr. Iwale confidently explained why this initiative would not follow the same path. It will not, because <laughs> not only that the Ministry is willing, we are excited to do it. <laughs> Reflecting on a past example, Dr. Oyewale cited the National Space Research and Development Agency's irrigation farming project, which involved drones, but was ultimately abandoned, drawing lessons to ensure this new project's success. Maybe that time will be some years ago, yes. when NASA did not think of having a commercial arm, where they have a private body, or no cure, no pay. If you don't work, you don't eat. Mm. This time around, there's a private entity that is not being paid by government that has to ensure that effective collaboration are entrenched everywhere, with, especially with foreign technical partners. He also spoke about the strategic measures in place to prevent compromises and ensure the integrity of the project. The technology we are putting in place, mm. even if I, the managing director of the project, if I decide to compromise, the ministry is saying the same thing I'm saying. They will only ask me questions. The office of the NSA or the DSS will probably be saying what I'm saying. So there's no room for, for compromise. There's no room at all for compromise here. In his closing remarks, Dr. Iwale shared his final thoughts on the significance of the project and its transformative potential for Nigeria. The, the only thing I want to say is to thank Dr. Dilia Lake for accepting this concept, taking it as far as the Federal Executive Council, getting the president's buy-in into the project it is you can't buy that with money and we are very grateful it's an opportunity for us to showcase technology the nigerianness in us it is an opportunity to show it and most importantly for other ministers to know that the world has moved on from foot soldiers to the, using geospatial intelligence to support compliance, revenue generation, optimization, blocking leakages and deriving brand new revenue lines because a lot of people new revenue lines could come from this. 
So the, the other agencies should know that we need money to run this country. And this is one of the best ways to do it.